This video is on adding and subtracting expressions with radicals, and also we're going to look at multiplying expressions with radicals. All right, so just real quick, like radicals, so what I mean by that is like like terms, like we can combine, I keep saying, I can hear myself, like 2x plus 3x equals 5x, and those are called like terms, right? So what makes a like radical? Like radicals have the same radicand and can be added and subtracted together. And so in a radical, which we know is a square root, the number inside is called the radicand. So if they have the same radicand, then you can add them together. So basically, the way I think of this is I just treat this like it's a variable. So imagine that this was 6x plus 9x. Then you would combine this together, and you would get 15x. But instead of 15x, you get 15 times the square root of 11. Okay? So 3 minus, or the square root of 3 minus 5 times the square root of 3. Remember, there's a 1 in front of this that's not written, because 1 times anything is just equal to itself. So 1 minus 5 would give you negative 4 times the square root of 3. So this is all about just simplifying expressions that involve radicals. And then 7 times the square root of 2 minus 8 times the square root of 2 would be negative 1 times the square root of 2. Pretty simple. All right, so the key is you can combine them using addition or subtraction if they have the same radicand. All right, sometimes you may need to simplify the radicals before being able to add or subtract them. So right now, this has a square root of 3, this has a square root of 12. So I can't combine those together. But the square root of 12 can be simplified. So the square root of 12, let me just work this downward here. So keep that the same. The square root of 12 can be broken into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 is 2. So now I have 5 times the square root of 3 minus 2 times the square root of 3. And now I can combine these together because they have the same radicand. So now I have 3 times the square root of 3. Hold on. I'm going to make my... Uh, my pen thinner here. It's too wide. Here we go. All right, so let's look at this next one. Square root of 7, you can't simplify. But the square root of 28, we can break into 7 and 4. And 4 is a perfect square. So let's do that. So we have 4 times the square root of 7 plus 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. And then the square root of 4 is 2, and I'll multiply that with this 2. So now I have 4 times the square root of 7 plus 4 times the square root of 7 equals 8 times the square root of 7. All right. So in this one, the 32 and the 18 can be broken up and simplified. The 32 can be simplified to 16 and 2. So let's do that. So we have 5 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. 18 can be split up into 9 times 2. So minus 4 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Square root of 16 is 4, and then 4 times 5 is 20. That gives me 20 times the square root of 2. Minus square root of 9 is 3, and 4 times 3 is 12 times the square root of 2. Now I have two radicals that I can combine together here. And so 20 minus 12 gives me 8 times the square root of 2. All right. So what about multiplying? All right. It's just like with when we had variables, so 2x times 3, those are not like terms but you can multiply those together, right? So you can multiply that to be 6x. So these do not have to have the same radicand in order to multiply them together. So if you see this, this looks a lot like the distributed property, which is exactly what we're going to do. So the square root of 10 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 60 plus 3 times the square root 
of 10. And now let's see if we can simplify this at all. So 15 and 4, right? So let's split that into square root of 15 times the square root of 4 plus 3 times the square root of 10. And so the square root of 4 is 2. So let me work over here. I'm running out of room. So I end up with 2 times the square root of 15 plus 3 times the square root of 10. And then check that and make sure that it can't be simplified any All right, so that can't be simplified any further. So that's our solution. Well, not really our solution, but that's the simplified version of this. All right, what about a binomial times a binomial? Well, don't forget about our friend. Hopefully you've covered this already. FOIL. So I'm going to multiply the first two terms. Square root of 6 times the square root of 6 comes out to the square root of 36. Then I'm going to multiply the outside terms. Square root of 6 times the square root of 3. So that's the square root of 18. And then the inside terms. So negative 2 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 6 would be negative 2 times the square root of 18. And then the last two terms, square root of 6 times square root of 3, is the square root of 18. All right. So what can we do to simplify this here? Well, square root of 36 is 6. And da -da -da -da. these all have a square root of 18. So that means we can combine all of those together. And I just realized that I made a mistake. So we're going to back this up. If you notice, I multiplied square root of 6 times square root of 3 twice. So when I came to the last, I should have done square root of 2, or negative 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 3. I'll, I'll just erase this and do it again. My apologies. See, you should always be looking to see if things make sense. And that did not make sense to me. So, let's go back to this. All right, so first two terms get multiplied. So that would be square root of 6 times square root of 6 is square root of 36. Then the outside terms. So square root of 6 times square root of 3 is the square root of 18. Then the inside terms. So that would be negative 2 times the square root of 18. And then here's where I messed up. I should have multiplied the last two terms. And that would give me negative 2 times the square root of 9. All right, so let's simplify this. Square root of 36 is 6. These have the same radicand, so I can combine these together. Remember, there's a 1 here. So this is 1 minus 2, so that's going to come out to negative 1 times the square root of 18. And then square root of 9 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6, so that's minus 6. All right, so now I have 6 minus 6, so those are actually going to cancel out. And this square root of 18... By the way, I didn't need to put that 1 there. The square root of 18, I can break up into the square root of 9 and the square root of 2. There's a, there's a negative sign sitting out front here because this was 1 minus 2 when I combined those together. That's where the negative came from. And now the square root of 9 is 3, and so I have negative 3 times the square root of 2. And you can't simplify it any further than that. All right, again, I apologize for my mistake there, but I make them too. So this binomial is being multiplied times itself. So let's break this apart and have the square root of 11 minus 2 times the square root of 11 minus 2. And we'll FOIL this, so the first two terms... By the way, when you do a square root of something times itself, 
it comes out as being equal to that number. So if you notice on the last one, the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 came out to 6. So I'm just going to skip to that right there. And I'm going to do the outside terms. So that's minus 2 times the square root of 11. And then the inside terms, minus 2 times the square root of 11. And then the last two terms, which would be negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. All right, so combine the 11 and the 4 together. You get 15. These have the same radicand, so I can combine those together. And now we get minus 4 times the square root of 11. And I don't think you can do anything else with that. 15 minus 4 times the square root of 11. All right, so that's it. So I hope that was helpful to you. If so, give it a like and a subscribe. And feel free to leave me a comment. Until next time.